Hello, I'm Ranger Dave. And I'm Ranger Joyce. And we are here at Big Cypress National Preserve to find out our next mission. Good morning, Ranger Dave and Ranger Joyce. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to find any evidence of these invasive species and attempt to eradicate them. The hydrilla. Brazilian pepper. The Burmese python. The cichlid. And the red bay ambrosia beetle. Should you be unable to locate any evidence of these invasive species, use the code name BICE, and any ranger at Big Cypress National Preserve will be your informant. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Ranger Dave and Ranger Joyce. We're roaming along the Turner River in the preserve and found hydrilla. And now we're stuck. Oh. This plant is a perennial herb, meaning it lives for many growing seasons. It's usually rooted, but fragments can drift in the water. The stems are slender with branches and tangled masses that can be up to 35 wow. feet long. It has saw teeth shaped leaf edges and white or translucent flowers that float along the top of the water. With the common name water time, this plant was brought into Florida in the early 1950s for aquarium use. You might find this in our irrigation canals and boating and swimming areas where it's crowding out native plant species and restricts the water flow. This can also lead to flooding along our rivers and canals. This plant lowers the dissolved oxygen concentrations and reduces aquatic life. With all of its stem fragments, buds, runners, and tubers, it can grow an inch or more a day. The tubers alone number in the millions per acre in the soils of Florida's waterways. We'll need to report the location of this sighting to the preserve's botanist so it can be removed using underwater treatments like special herbicides that only attack this plant. Onward to, to the, the next, next invasive, invasive species! species. dirt road here in the preserve and we found this bird meets python it's a large constrictor that can grow over 20 feet in length they have gray or green to gold base coloring with dark brown blotches along the back and sides the top of their head has a distinct arrow shape and the belly is dotted with dark spots and blotches. These snakes were first brought into South Florida as exotic pets, and wild populations became established from those that escaped or were released. They are invasive due to their negative impacts on Florida's native wildlife. They disrupt the ecosystem by preying on deer, raccoons, marsh rabbits, and other small prey that the Florida panther and other predators need to survive. Did you know the females can lay 50 to 100 eggs per year? Wow. They are very hard to find due to their coloration and secretive nature. Well, let's get some GPS coordinates for this location, and then I'll bag this specimen and take it to headquarters. There, the wildlife biologist can do a necropsy to find out what it's been eating. All of the data they collect helps scientists learn more about this invasive species. Time to move on to our next mission. That's right. this. We're standing here in the pinelands in front of a Brazilian pepper or Florida Christmas holly. It's an evergreen shrub that can grow 30 feet tall. It's got smooth gray bark and has a fragrant sap that is yellowish brown and sticky. The bright red berries grow in dense clusters among oblong rounded leaves. As you mentioned in the name, this plant was brought into Florida in the mid-1800s for use as an ornamental plant. It's a very aggressive weed that displaces native vegetation because it produces many seedlings which are shade tolerant and able to grow in any environment. 
These shrubs form dense thickets that crowd out the native plants here in the preserve and even in your own backyard. Well, we need to contact the botanists here at Big Cypress National Preserve so they can remove this plant and treat the stump with herbicides to prevent it from regrowing. On to the next mission. Let's go, let's go. On. Nice. This is what I'm looking for. This is a freshwater fish called a cichlid that I caught here in the canal to preserve. Its body is oval and flattened on the sides, and the head tapers towards the mouth. It has spiny and soft dorsal fins and a rounded tail fin. It can grow up to 15 and a half inches long. This species comes in many different colors, so it can be tricky to identify. This one is golden in color with orange on its chin, throat, and chest. There are six to eight wide bars that run across the side of its body. It's got a large eye spot that is on the tail stem too. Known to some locals as the atomic sunfish, these were introduced as an aquarium fish back in the 1950s, and they may have been released by pet owners or escaped from fish farms. They are very adaptable and live in a variety of habitats, like the canals, rivers, lakes, and marshes that we all like to fish, as they can tolerate a wide range of salt concentrations in water. They compete with Florida's native fish for habitat and food resources. They also reproduce at a faster and younger rate and take up the native fish's spawning space as they spread across the marshes during wet season and survive in ponds during dry season. Did you know they hunt in packs and devour the shrimp, snails, and insects that form the base of the food chain? Wow. We need to record this sighting of, on Florida's I've Got One website immediately. Only, Only one, one more invasive, invasive species, species to go. go. the side of a road here in the preserve and we found evidence of the red bay ambrosia beetle. There are 30 species of this beetle found in Florida, several of which are non-native. They are very small, about two millimeters in length, dark brown to black in color and cylinder shaped. The males are smaller than females and can't fly. The females are strong flyers but they can only fly up to 15 feet in the air. Each female can produce up to 300 young. That's amazing. This beetle was brought into the United States on wooden crates, pallets, and even nursery plants from foreign countries. And these beetles have a symbiotic relationship with a host tree, as they carry and deposit fungal spores on their bodies as they're boring into the sapwood of the tree. These fungal spores grow quickly and infect the tree's tissue, disrupting the flow of water and the nutrients that a tree needs to survive. This deadly disease is known as laurel wilt. This fungus is consumed by the beetle larvae until adulthood, and then the beetles leave the tree and attack other trees. This cycle can take only 50 days, and with lots of beetles being hatched during a season, this can seriously affect plants like the red bay, sassafras, and my favorite, avocados. Oh my. Well, let's report this sighting to the entomologists and biologists here at the preserve so they can treat the fungus using fungicides. We did it! Ooh, man, thank you for joining us today on our mission. There are teams of scientists like wildlife biologists, botanists, entomologists, and others working here at Big Cypress National Preserve every day to collect important data that's needed to monitor, control, and eradicate invasive species throughout the 729,000 acres of the preserve. So, what do you think? Is this mission possible? or impossible.